a little bit tougher than the first half of the semester, especially for the undergraduate student. Uh, these parts, frankly speaking, not the requirement of the undergraduate student, uh, but the, since we uh, offer the uh, undergraduate database design, uh, it's cross-listed with the uh, graduate, so we are going to cover this part. But however, in other words, that this part will be the main part of the graduate, the database design course so far. So far, we have talked about and uh, uh, learned about the how to model and how to design, how to implement the database system. Okay, so without database system, yes, we can build uh, uh, the any the computer system or the uh, project, we can do that. However, when we have very large data, the, it's not easy to manage and uh, retrieve the data uh, efficiently. Because of that, uh, we are using the database. So, what about the database management system itself? So, what is the DBMS? DBMS? It's a software. software. Yes, right? For example, which one is the most popular one? Oracle. Oracle? Yes. Informix, DB2? Yes. Yes. It's only the relational database management system? No. The relational is one of the examples. So we have HDB or IMS or network database and object-oriented database also. However, still the relational database management system is most popular. Among them, the, we know the Oracle Informix, these are the popular the software, which means you need to project that software to use. So, but for educational purpose or the individual, the personal purpose, you don't have to buy most of this. Uh, recently, I met um, my old colleagues uh, uh, who worked for the uh, project manager. Uh, he said that sometimes uh, he doesn't know. The, he heard about the salesman from the Oracle, but the, he uh, does not know actually the who he or she is. Because the, nowadays it is true that many of the real the life project in the industry they, uh, there's no other option to purchase the Oracle because the Oracle is a part of the uh, other package, like the ERP system or the HR system. So, but I believe there might be changes, not near soon, but uh, eventually the database design, the database model will be changing into the object-oriented concept eventually. The, like the old NoSQL database, but it is true. So we uh, are using the uh, relational database memory system, mostly that, which means we need, we'd better know how that DBMS, the relational database memory system, are organized. So the first part is the indexing structure for the file. The last class, we talk about the data file where, how the data are stored. So we learned about the ordered file, or the non-ordered file, and also hash file, and so on. So these are the storage, these are the data structure for table, okay? Then, so we talk about the DBMS versus file system. Which one is better? Right? We cannot say the one of them is better than the other, right? So each one has their pros and cons. So for example, DB, so file system, but file system usually is good for manage the data when you have the small amount of data. And also, so you can do whatever you want. So you can read the data, you can design the data file, the, uh, whatever you want, okay? On the other hand, the DBMS can deal with very large data, but not much flexible. So flexible, not non flexible means once you design your database, your data should fit to that database design. Like the student, so you design, you model student, described by name and ID only. What if? We want to keep the later the address. You need to change the design first. 
So which means there is not much flexible. But in our real life, why don't you think about your uh, the life or your data? It's not structured, actually. So sometimes you can uh, the have the more information about your friend or what other entities. So that is the pros and cons. Speed in terms of speed. Which one is faster? Uh, the file system is definitely faster. Why? Because the DBMS itself is uh, running on top of operating system that include the CPU, memory, and the other file system. On top of that, the DBMS is running. So which means DBMS depends on the this one and also overhead. Okay? Then why we need to use the DBMS, which is a slower than file system? When you retrieve the data, actually it's a faster. How can we speed up the retrieve the search the data using DBMS? One of the way is memory. That always. In the computer architecture, how can we speed up to access the data? Memory, cache. We can use the memory area as a cache. What is a cache? It's a secondary, when, second, secondary memory. A secondary memory for what? You want to reuse the data, okay? Instead of the visiting the your home or the whatever, why don't you keep the data that you already retrieved? Then reuse and reuse. That is a cache that we can use and create the much more than the other application. So for the DBMS, for example, if this is your physical memory, for example, Oracle, Oracle requires when you install the Oracle DBMS system software, it suggests at least a half of your physical memory should be allocated for the DBMS. That should be also at least 4 gigabyte. Okay? Because of that, actually, the, we can speed up. But it's still limited. Okay? Not only for the DBMS, but for other applications, they can speed up using the cache area. Okay, other application actually uses such a cache. That is one. Thing. So, so this is called the buffer management. We are not going to deal with the details separately, such a buffer management, but uh, it is also an important part of the DBMS. There is another way to speed up, drastically speed up to access the data. Okay. Actually, the, we rely on the computer architecture to speed up, to access the data, when you are using the memory as a cache. And what can be, uh, what can be the other solution to speed up when you access the data using DBMS? You can access to the primary key of the record. Primary key means it's a different order of the data. So we learned about the ordered data file. So data are sorted. So we can use the binary search to access the data only for the ordered data. What about the non-ordered data? Data file. We cannot use the binary search, only sequential search. So which means it's a slow. The complexity in terms of a big O notation is a n over two, right? So and it depends on number of data. So we need to speed up to access the data. How? Why don't we get the idea from the primary key or order? If the data are ordered, we can easily access the data. So what if we use different data sources? This is a table, your data file that we learned the last, last week. Okay. So either ordered or not ordered, why don't we sort the data or we organize such a data and point that location. That is called the index. Think about your textbook. Nobody wants to search, look up your textbook from the page one, two, three, four, five, six. Right? Instead, you can use the index. Mostly index is the last part of your textbook. Okay, so using index, we can easily find or look up the 
contents that you are looking for. Just exactly the same idea. So another way is why don't we use the index to speed up to access the data. So this chapter we are going to mostly talk about the indexing structure. So what is an index, by the way? What is an index? Pointer. Pointer. Index use the pointer. Index itself is it's a data structure. Okay? It's a data structure, right? What, that, what do you think about the index? Is it something? No, no, it's funny. The data structure is the answer for everything. In the yes, system. right. So we are learning the, actually the data structure in computer science. Everything is a data structure, as I, as I mentioned all beginning of this semester. Think about network. Network is nothing but the data structure. Without data structure, you cannot send, you cannot receive the data. You cannot use the smartphone. If I say that this thing to my daughter, she doesn't believe. Really. <laughs> but that's true. So it's the same thing. Especially the indexing structure is a kind of the it's a representative, the data structure used in the database. It's a very important data structure. We will see how the uh, indexing structure uh, used in the DBMS is organized. Okay. There are different types of the indexing structure, but mostly it's the same idea as the one in your textbook. So if you are not sure the, what is an index used in the DBMS, think about your textbook. It's almost the same structure. Okay? So we will see. Um, by, uh, eventually, we will learn about the B plus 3 indexing structure. B stands for? Binary. It's not binary, in, unfortunately. Okay? I know that you learn the binary uh, search or binary search tree in your the data structure course, but in the DBMS, the especially relational database management system, when we are saying B3 or B plus 3, B stands for balanced tree. So we will see why balanced is more important in the DBMS. It's not binary. Binary means it's a half, right? The less and the more, or lower and higher. It's a binary. But in database, we have more than that. So it's not binary. It starts from the binary, but it's uh, the more than that. Especially, that it should be balanced tree. So we will see what is a balanced tree later. That is my common question when I uh, have an interview for the J or the others. The, what is a B in the B plus or the B3? 99% or 99.99 uh, the indexes, index used in the DBMS, RDBMS, the relational database management system, they are B plus 3 indexes. So who will see the B plus 3 index? First, index, why don't you open your textbook, then see index. Index part is organized by what? Keyword sorted by alphabetical order, right? So from A to C. Then next to the keyword, what can you see? So keyword A and next A. page number. B e, three, this is a 250. Same thing. So index used in the uh, database management system, they have the field value. It's a value plus pointer or address. That means when we access the data, think about the not ordered data data file. So we have the data file. Each one, each block represents the blocking. So we learned about the blocking of approaches of file. A file is organized by number of Blocks. So each block has a number of record. This average number of record is called the blocking factor. Okay? If we have the five, it's a five. Something like that. Okay. Then if this is non-ordered file, okay? It's non-ordered file. It's just append, append, append. Okay? So to search the data like the lead, we need to sequentially search because it's not ordered. So what if? We have another data structure that have, that is ordered by the last name. So, A 
Alex or the B C and Lee is here. Lee is long number. This time, this is the pointer to record. It can be directly record, but most of the data files are organized by the block. Why is a block? It's a long basic unit of I/O input and output. We don't have to read. We cannot read the record by record actually. Even though we are going to access the one record lead, but entire block that record belongs to will be returned. So which means we need the pointer to the block, actually. Block ID is in. So exactly same structure using commercial DBMS. Commercial DBMS has the block ID. Block pointer means the block ID. For example, block number 0, 1, so we can put the 1. So how can we search the lead in this index? Because they are ordered, we can use binary search. Okay? So this is a low, and we can reduce. Then, one more. That's it. So that is the idea of index. And the index has a number of index key entry. This is called the key entry. Index key entry include the uh, value plus pointer, or address, or block ID. In Oracle, for example, they said, or oh, they have the block ID also. Okay. Any question? If you can understand that one, so if you can understand what is an index, Index is a data structure, but not just a data structure. It's a specialized data structure for what? Fast accessing the data. Okay? So that is the main part. So, the next. So, there are two types of the index. One is a dense index. Another one is a sparse index. Dense index means, dense means it's everything. Okay. Sparse means it's not everything, which means so when you make the index, you can make the index for all the record, for all and each record. That is the dense index. However, sometimes you don't have to keep the, all the data in your index. Instead, only one. For example, if what can be the so. This is the ordered file, but ordered by the department ID, department number. Okay? So this is the 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4. So 1 is the Alex and the David and so on. And 2 like that. This is ordered by the when you are using the or when you access the data, like the lead, when you are looking for the lead, still you need to do the sequential search. However, when you search with the department number, you can use the binary search that go to this one. So, why don't we make the index of the, this department number? At that time, you don't have to keep one, 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 instead, where is the starting of this one? So one. One is block number zero. Then two is a block number the two. Three and three, four. So you don't have to keep all the index key entry, only one of them from the each block or each group. Okay? At the time this is called sparse index. Yes. Don't you need the offset of the specific record to locate it? The offset? That's a good question. For example, this is a one block, and this block has one, two, three, four. It's a full record. Do we need the offset? Yes, we should know. But what is this one? One block. One block. So when you read the data, entire block loaded into the memory first. So in the memory, if you are using any sorting algorithm or any Search algorithm, we can almost ignore that question. 
because it's a happen in the memory. So offset definitely we need to know, but we can almost ignore such a overhead comparing to this I. That's the reason we are not uh, going to pay attention to that. Okay? Okay, that's the that is the reason this is important. Size of the group. If this one is 128 megabyte, for example, then definitely that will be overhead, even, even though that's happening in the memory. Okay? But such a big size of the block will be used for data warehousing or the batch job, not online transaction processing. Okay? That is the reason we need to think about the size process, block size process, your, the characteristic of your system. Okay, so for example, let's see the example of the benefit of using the index. We can still use the same. So let's say this is an employee table. Okay, employee table has the name, social security number, address, job, salary, and so on. So record size is 100. 50 byte. Okay, block size is the 500, this is a 512 byte. Then blocking factor, if this is not unspent, okay, then how many? It's a 5, right? The blocking factor is the blocking factor is the a 3, because it's a 150 bytes. It's a three, three record per block. That is a blocking factor. Okay, why blocking factor is important? We are not going to count the number of record, instead number of block. Okay, for the cost. So then, how many blocks do we need? Because we have a total 30,000 records, so we can divide by the blocking factor. So 10,000 blocks, which means if we scan from first record to the last record, how many blocks? We need to access 10,000 blocks. That is the cost. Okay? That is the cost. That is the time. So if we are saying this is expensive, that means that because we have, we need to read the 10,000 the blocks. Okay? Then what if we use the index? So in this case, if we are using the Linear search, sometimes it's called a linear search or full time scan or the sequential search, exactly the same thing. So this is the cost. Then what if we are using the index? So index, index consists of the key plus pointer, okay? Key, so in this time key is the social security number, it's a nine byte plus the pointer size is the 7 byte. So total 16 byte for each key entry. Okay? 16 byte. So this is the one is a 16 byte. Also, index is also 5, right? Which means you can use the block. So in one block, how many index key entry? Same thing. 512 byte divided by 16 and floor. Then how many index key entry? Think about it. in one page how many keyword in your index, in your text. It's the same thing. We try to count how many index key entry in one block. Okay? That is the divide by the 16, that is a 32 entry, index key entry. Which means in one block, we have the, for example, social security 111 and pointer block ID is a 0 and the 2222 block ID is a 10. How many of this? It's a 32 index key entry. Then, how many blocks do we need for index? Total how many? So it's a 30,000 social security number record divided by 32. That is the 938 blocks here. One, two, three. So 938 blocks. Okay. 
Then, when we are using the index, think about the textbook. First, look up the index key entry. How do you look up? How do you look up the index key entry? Are you going to search it from A, B, C, D? Because it's already organized, we can use binary search, right? So for the 938, N is 938, what is the cost of the search the data using the binary search? Look, 938. Okay, so you can calculate the, this one. That is the approximately 10. Okay, 10 block, 9 point something, which means 10 block is the maximum to search the data. So 10, let's say 10. We need only just the 10 to find the 111, the 3333, and something, the 4. This is for me, then. Is that all? No, we need to go to this block to find the lead. Okay, so 10 plus 1. Always you need to add one more block to access the data file. So 10 plus 1. So that is 11 block. That is much faster than the 10,000 block. Okay? That is the benefit of using index. Okay. So, what kind of index do we have? First, primary index. Primary index is the index for the ordered file. Okay. It's a using primary key. For example, let's see the data file. This is the data file. Okay, it's a, so uh, based on the blocking. So we have the employee is sorted by the name. It, this time, let's say the name is the primary key. It's the order the file. Okay, so how can we search the data without using index? We can use the binary search. Okay, however, if we build the index, Anyway, first, what is a logarithm graph? Like this, right? Which means it's a monotony increase the graph. The more data you have, the longer time it takes. It will be, it will take a time. So if you have a lot of data, even binary research takes a longer time. So can we make it faster? Why don't we make the index of the even primary key? Which means, if we are thinking about the index of the textbook, so if we know where is the starting page of A, okay? Where is the starting page for B? Where is the starting page for C? Okay? Then we can, we don't have to change the search. The, from A, B, C, D. Is that we can directly go to that page, then find the keyword that you want. It's the same idea. So for that A, why don't we make the index using this, 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 the first record only. Why? If we know the location of the this block to search the data inside of this doesn't take a longer time, okay? Almost we can ignore it. Why? Because if this block will be loaded into the memory. In the memory, we can find the data, right? So we are going to make the index. So bring the era to here. And Adam, John Adams over here, and Alexander over here, and so on. This representative the record is called anchor, okay? Anchor the record for each block. Sometimes we can use the first record as an anchor. We can use the last one also. In case of the last one, all the record less than this one, okay, lower than this one, will belong to the same 
block. Okay, then we can make the index. So for Ayra and Adams and this. Question, is this the dense index or non-dense index? What's sparse index? Dense or sparse? Dense. Dense means index key entry. Number of key entry is the same as number of record. Are they same? No. So much less. Right? Because we select one record from one block. So this is a sparse index, non-dense index. So index size is much the smaller. Then, how can we search the data? This is also blocking. Block, block, and block. This is also based on the blocking. So from index, they are also ordered. Of course, it's index. So we can use binary search. Binary search for this one. So we found the this. Then this one has the pointer for this. Then finally, we can access the data. This is called primary index. This is an index for primary. They are already sorted. Okay, So we don't have to keep all the record. Instead, only anchor one record per block okay, and make the index. Let's calculate the cost of the, this one. So we are going to use the, it's the same. A little bit slightly different. The block size is 1K. Okay, The number of record is 30,000 and record length is 100 which means what is the blocking factor? It's a 10, right? 10 record. So per block. And the key field is a 9, and pointer size is 6 total. 1 index key entry is a 15 byte. Then we can calculate the blocking factor for the index. That is the 68. Okay. Then calculate. So if we are not going to use not going to use the index. We have total how many blocks? The 3,000 blocks. The 3,000 blocks. So if we are using the binary search, that is the log B based on the 2. So log 3,000 is on 2. If you calculate this one, it's 11 point something. So 12 blocks are needed. Without using index, it's faster. Then what if we are using the index, the primary index? The so primary index, so we need to calculate the blocking factor 68, which means how many blocks? So 40, so 3,000 divided by 68, so 45 blocks. So 45 blocks for the index. So we can use the binary search for the 45 block, that is the 5 